In part one, we looked at some of the teaching strategies used at Selwyn Primary School in East London, with their gifted and talented pupils. In this program, we'll look at some of the wider whole school issues involved in providing for the gifted and talented. An important element is curriculum planning. Then I would suggest that um, we can either keep this... Research. Working with teacher colleagues, the school's gifted and talented coordinator ensures that they plan work that involves and extends their gifted and talented pupils into every topic and every lesson. Think of your particular children, your, your gifted children. Would there be an opportunity after week one to set them a task to research family trees? before the next lesson. Yeah, they could, and they could use a computer to do that. That's right. So if we said between lesson one and lesson two, that group had done some research, and then they can come to the lesson, and they can introduce the concept yeah. of what they've found. Yeah, they will be able to do Jordan that. Be yeah. Great, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Your teacher assistants are? Sabika, Miss Ahmed, and Mr. Odin. They, they'll also have a lot of knowledge about family trees. Yeah, they will. And they might also be able to um, lead groups mm. and feed the knowledge of their own um, experiences. So that might be another way of grouping them. Yeah. All right. With each with a teacher assistant and possibly you talking about your family tree because I think there's such a lot for information going into because, that yeah, because, lesson. Because you to model your family tree. I think the most basic need is that teachers have to focus on what children can do and stop this looking at what children can't do. They have to uh, build up um, a culture of challenge in their classroom, whereby there are many open-ended questions and activities um, that children can engage in that will stretch them to, well, as far as they can possibly go. By doing this, teachers are discovering that um, they mustn't underestimate the children's abilities. Not underestimating ability extends to all pupils. OK, right, what we're going to do today is try to have a look at our crests. This is a science session with a hearing impaired, gifted and talented pupil from year three. He's working with a teacher of the deaf and a communicator. OK, now when you use this, you'll be able to see the crest a lot more clearly. OK, have a look. Tell me what you can see. Big leaves. Take a look at your crest and we're going to try to draw what we see in front of us. And you need to take good care, you need to look carefully through the magnifying glass and add lots of detail. Do you understand? Yeah? Good point. Okay, have a go. How do you identify a hearing impaired child as gifted and talented? You instinctively know from working with a deaf child as much as you would with a hearing child what their ability is and whether that shows a sign of being gifted and talented. But is it more difficult to provide for them? I don't think it's any more difficult than it would be within the classroom setting. I think it actually it's easier for us because we have smaller numbers that, that we are working with, so we can differentiate our lessons uh, to far more detail than what we could for 30 children. Another example of identifying potential is in EAL language support. And write something about your first picture. These pupils have been identified as gifted and talented in their own language. Ugni came to the school recently from Lithuania. Could I just write Mark, Mark and Darren in English because they're not... Yeah, because Mark and Darren, they're the name, aren't they? So if they are named, Sana's main languages are Korean and Urdu. They're all writing a story in their own language. What of writing? Can you read it to me, please? Do you know what does it mean in English? Can you tell me, please? One day, two... Yeah, one day. One day, two boys... Two boys? Two boys mm -hmm. going in the zoo. Going to the zoo. Going to the zoo. They are very gifted because these children are very gifted in their own language as well as English. Especially like Ugni, she started uh, three months ago, but now she begins to write simple sentences in English without any help.
Head teacher Kieran Clarkin explains why he's taken on these gifted and talented initiatives so wholeheartedly. Well, I've always been interested in children with special educational needs and uh, making sure that their needs are properly catered for. And as far as I'm concerned, gifted and talented children are uh, children with special needs that need special provision. Uh, but I believe once you've made that decision, and once, that the, once the teachers know that that's a, a focus that you're prepared to stand by, then everything else moves f forward from there. Uh, special, uh, more able children have a lot to contribute to uh, the day-to-day -day life of the school. Uh, they are lead learners in some contexts. They can support other children. Uh, other children can learn from seeing top quality work or from seeing talent at its very best. £99 for a child to go to Florida. That's a this video. gifted and talented pupil is presenting her persuasive argument to the rest of the class. From the 5th of September to the 19th of October. That's exactly when children are at school. I propose that every one of us should make a complaint to the travel industries, asking them to please consider lowering their prices for us who, by law, have to go to school during these cheaper periods. Gifted children tend to have certain characteristics. Uh, for example, they might uh, have incredible ability to persevere at a task, to follow it through, to, to go into something in really great detail. And that's uh, something we need to look at and, and uh, support them with. Uh, as far as talent is concerned, we find that children who are very able at sport are willing to spend additional time practicing the skills, uh, making sure their skills are as good as they possibly can be. One such talented pupil at Selwyn School is 11-year-old cricketer Mahidal. Here we've highlighted a talented pupil in year six. We've managed to adapt the timetable so that he comes out of his lessons uh, once a week and works with, uh, specified specifically with the cricket coach. Yeah, that's a wide, changing the line a little. The cricket coach has been brought from Essex County Cricket and he's going to be working with him. He's been working with him with 10 weeks already and he's going to continue that and develop his skills. It was highlighted last year uh, that he was talented within sport. It was highlighted in other areas. In all his sport, he's very talented. And it was sparked up by another teacher who then contacted myself to see how we could move and how we could work together to bring in people to work with Mahidal. So, well, sometimes uh, very able children can come across as being uh, a little bit hostile to authority. They can be difficult in, in some ways. They don't uh, always conform to the, the, the typical child in, in the classroom. So we have to make sure that that uh, uh, type of behaviour isn't seen as a, as a negative thing. Uh, the teacher has to be aware that a very untidy child, a child who doesn't always finish her work or who uh, loses interest in a particular uh, aspect of the work, may be a child who has very high ability. And what do the pupils think about being labelled as gifted and talented? Sometimes it can be really hard and then you really wish you weren't gifted and talented. And then, so, but sometimes it can be really easy and they're quite proud of that and sometimes I'll speak for myself, I get a little bit big-headed but <laughs> that doesn't matter. <laughs> you don't really want to say, ooh, ooh, I'm gifted and talented, talented you, and everybody. I'm cleverer than you and yeah. you're stupid but it doesn't work like that because we all like, it's just that some of us have <laughs> have a better um, Way. Understanding. Yeah, way, understanding things that we're learning in school, but and then the other people, they just don't put as much effort into their work. Sometimes, yeah, we can get tired of it, and it's like they're putting too much pressure on us. How does the rest of their class react? Just say um, we're doing math, and somebody stuck on the question. They come ask, asking us, "How do we do it?" or "Is that the right way I'm doing it?" or something like that. But, um, yeah, it's right. The way that they say that we're gifted and talented, it should make them feel like, oh, if I do more work, I'll be able to um, like, do the stuff that they're doing. They shouldn't be jealous. They should work to their full like, standard. Yeah, full potential and work so they can be like 
like some of the year fours and fives, um, if they work really, really hard, they can be like us and do hard work. And it's like if you're in the classroom and you're doing some like harder work, people think, oh, it's not fair. This is this stuff is probably easier than what we're doing. But when they try, they actually find it harder. Instead of <clears throat> they saying it's unfair, we actually help them to um, that encourage them to do more work. Sometimes it gets annoying because yeah. when we're trying to do um, our, our work, work they, they just come, come disturb disturbing yeah. us. Yeah. You're just like, can you go away? I'm trying to do, do my, my work. work. Do the teachers give them more attention? The teachers actually spend more time with, with the, the yeah, yeah. people yeah. that have... Because they know that we can easy, easily, easily do, do the it. work yeah. and everything. So they tend to go off with the uh, people who aren't in gifted. Yeah, but but not, sometimes, really yeah, true. but that's not really true because we still actually well, get stuck. Hard. They use more scientific um, words like carbon dioxide or evaporation instead of um, the water going up and turns into <laughs> air. <laughs> Sorry, we don't come up with like a good story that's like not up to the teachers standards that they expect of us we'll get in trouble because they think oh you're gifted and talented you so have, yeah you better. have to do better we're supposed to be like super intelligent yeah, yeah. But, but we're not in everything and how do the parents react i have never experienced any difficulty with parents at this school uh, because we focus on gifted and talented children I think once the parents know that all children are being well provided for, uh, they value the fact that the school celebrates success because every parent realises that in celebrating success, in aiming for the very best, their own children are more likely to do well. And so for me it's a myth that uh, parents uh, are opposed to this sort of focus. I am sure that if this happens, then the travel and airline companies would make a lot more money as more people will be using their services. And let's not forget our poor teachers who are in the same predicament. I know you'll agree when I say some of them need a holiday even more than us. Well done, I agree. And how do the teachers respond to the challenge of including the gifted and talented in their teaching? Our teachers, I'm proud to say, are very, very enthusiastic. Because they've seen the results of what um, we've achieved, um, we are getting a high levels in SATs in Year 6 and in Year 2. We are getting children with a very positive attitude to learning. We are getting uh, work from the children of a very high quality and standard indeed. Not only that, but teachers are finding it's the most stimulating thing that they're doing. Um, it's exciting, it's challenging to them. They come out of a lesson feeling positive that children have achieved more than they were expected to achieve. And that makes you want to go on and do more and more. So yes, our teachers are challenged, they're excited, they're enthusiastic. I'm not saying they're finding it easy, but then teaching never was easy.